After studying this module, you shall be able to know about the various aspects of death due to firearm injuries, post-mortem appearance in case of death due to firearm injuries, then the medical legal aspects of death due to firearm injuries. To introduce the topic, I will begin with a quote from Robert Henlin. There are no dangerous weapons, they are only dangerous men. When it comes to the firearm injuries, they are one of the most captivating but most difficult to understand. We will try to do that in this particular module. The forensic ballistics is the branch of science dealing with the investigation of firearms, ammunition and the problems arising from their use. A firearm is defined as any weapon which discharges a missile by the expensive force of the gases produced by the burning of an explosive substance. Then we need to understand certain related terminologies like proximal or internal ballistics. This is the study of firearms and projectiles. The intermediate or the exterior ballistics. This is the study of motion of projectile after it leaves the gun barrel till the time it hits the target. Then the terminal ballistics which involves the study of behavior of missiles once they penetrate their targets and the wound ballistics which is the study of the effect of missiles on the living tissue. Then let's see how the firearms are classified. They can be classified into various categories, four categories basically. The rifled bore firearms, the smooth bore firearms, the air or gas operated firearms and then in India we have got that peculiar country made firearms. The rifled firearms may be further divided into two high velocity firearms as well as the low velocity firearms. The high velocity like which the weapons which are fired by putting on the shoulder arms for example rifle, the automatic weapons like machine gun, stun gun and the low velocity which are hand held like revolver, pistol. Then a smooth board firearm also called as shotguns. They can be single barreled or double barreled and they can be breech loader or muzzle loader and there can be cylinder bore or choke bore. Third category is the air or gas operated firearm. This is usually referred to as air guns since these most often use the compressed air. This is used to propel a projectile. So uh, these weapons are uh, you can say um, but still they are no means innocuous. The fatalities even have been uh, seen with that. The country made firearms, these are crude smooth bowed firearms but having some part as a rifling and they are definitely fatal. The ammunition is usually loaded through the muzzle end of the barrel. Let us see rifled firearm injury characteristic, how it looks like. There can be entry wound and there can be the exit wounds. Let's see what are the various phenomena which are present at the entry wound. The distance between the muzzle end of the firearm and the target, this is called as range. This may be contact range, close range, near range or distant range. When the muzzle end is in contact with the body, it is called as contact range. When this range is within the distance traveled by flame, which extends usually up to 8 centimeters, it is called as close range. The near range, if it is within the distance traveled by unburnt or partially burnt gunpowder, which usually extends up to a distance of 40 to 50 centimeters with handguns and 60 centimeters to 100 centimeters or say 1 meter in case of rifles. So this is called as near range. Then the distance range, if it is beyond the range of flames, smoke and gunpowder then it is called as distant range. During the bullet's attempt at perforating the skin while entering due to the spin, the edge of the entrance wound may be abraded in the form of a collar and which is called as abrasion collar or areola. In some cases, there is contusion instead of abrasion, in which case it is more appropriately called as contusion collar. The diameter of the entry hole together with the abrasion collar may give the approximate diameter of the bullet. 
the barrel of a firearm is generally lubricated between uses when such a weapon is fired the bullet as it is propelled through the barrel would naturally carry this grease which is used as a lubricant on it and this subsequently gets deposited on the skin around the entrance wound so the spin of the bullet causes wiping of its surface on the skin while entering and therefore it produces grease or dirt color the abrasion and grease colors normally measures only up to 0.3 cm and 0.7 cm respectively when both abrasion and grease colors are present the grease color is seen as the inner zone while the abrasion color constitutes the outer zone burning scorching singeing of the skin and hair result from the flame that emerges from the muzzle at the time of firing the clotting around the entry wound may also show evidence of burning then the tattooing or also called as peppering this results from the grains of gunpowder being driven into the skin each grain acting as a minute missile this tattooing is seen on the skin as a small discrete black specks which cannot be wiped off because they are embedded in the skin layers the extent of tattooing will depend upon the caliber of the weapon the type of the powder used and the range the same may be absent if the firing has taken place through clothing the blackening or smudging this results from a superficial deposit of smoke on the skin in other words it is only the carbon particle deposition over the skin and hence can be easily wiped off with a wet sponge the intensity of the smudging will depend on the caliber of the weapon the type of powder used and the range thus the greater the caliber of the weapon wider the area of blackening and vice versa smudging may also be absent on the skin if firing has taken place through the clothing the presence of blackening especially if a smokeless powder is used may not be clearly visible to the naked eye in such cases infrared or ultraviolet photography will help to visualize it carbon monoxide is also evolved on explosion of gunpowder and imparts a cherry red color to the surrounding tissue a lead ring or a metal ring around the wound tree wound results from the deposition of very small quantities of lead or other metal in the form of a ring or collar as the projectile enters the skin the lead ring can be appreciated radiologically or by neutron activation analysis let's see the contact shot if the firearm is placed in contact with the skin or clothing a contact wound over a dense area such as the vault of the skull is generally large and cruciate that is cruciform stellate or star shaped due to the explosive effect of the gases which are liberated the imprint of the muzzle of the weapon may be found stamped on the skin the burning the blackening and tattooing are slight or absent in the adjacent skin since all the components of the explosion are driven into the wound the tissues are often saturated with carbon monoxide and therefore cherry red in color the cranial contact wounds are generally seen on the forehead or temple the contact wounds over thin bone chest or abdomen are usually uh, circular in shape and are surrounded by abrasion or contusion color the overall diameter of the hole plus the color represents the approximate diameter of the bullet the surrounding hair is also singed then if we see the close shot after contact shot close shot the firearm was fired within the range of the flame and powder blast but was in not in direct contact with the skin or clothing this flame may travel approximately up to 75 cm in case of revolver or pistol and 15 cm in case of a rifle the wound appears as a circular hole surrounded by scorching singeing blackening and tattooing abrasion color and grease color are also present then we if we see the near shot it means that the firearm which was fired outside the range of the flame but within the range of powder blast the entry wound is circular or oval in shape the unburned powder grains and small metallic particles that travel approximately a distance of 60 cm in the case of revolver and pistol and maybe up to 1 meter in case of rifle in practical situation tattooing is seen up to a maximum distance of 90 cm 
the singeing of hair and scorching are absent a smudging can occur up to a range of 30 cm grease color and abrasion color are present then in case of distant shot the fourth category it means that the firearm was discharged outside the range of flame and powder blast the entry wound is circular with inverted margins scorching tattooing and blackening all are absent the grease color and abrasion color are present the distant shot suggest a range beyond self infliction the range in any case of gunshot injury can be estimated accurately by test firing using the same gun and similar cartridge at different ranges and comparing the effects with wound present on to the victim if we see the skull in the skull the wound of interest shows a punched in hole in the outer table the inner table is unsupported and a cone shaped piece of bone is detached forming a crater that is larger than the hole on the outer table and it shows beveling the fissured fractures often radiate from the defect as the bone fragments have to pass through the dura before entering the brain lacerations are usually irregular and involved leptomeninges at the point of exit a punched out opening is produced in the inner table and beveling is on the outer table the wound is funnel shaped with the funnel opening up in the direction in which the bullet is traveling in both entrance and exit wounds the exit wound is larger due to the deformity and tumbling of the bullet entering the skull they may often be associated with rich fissured fractures radiating from the central hole then if you see the exit wound the exit wound vary greatly in size shape and configuration they are usually larger than the corresponding wound of entry scorching blackening and tattooing of course are absent the abrasion and grease colors are absent the edges are invariably everted that means outwards and if the skin at the exit wound this appears to be circular or nearly circular clear defect surrounded by margin of abrasion usually broader than the entry wound this resembles a wound of entrance in in case then it is called as showed exit wound or supported exit wound this phenomena is caused by the bullet fires at long range or through clothing or when the firearm is of a small caliber and discharge in contact with the skin at a point where bone is not immediately below the skin surface then if we see the track of the wound this is the path traversed by the projectile inside the body of a victim of gunshot injury between the entry and exit wounds in case of a low velocity weapons the track can be devious instead of straight right so they they, they may deviate an x ray prior to autopsy will assist significantly in locating bullets or pellets lodged inside the body then the second category that is the smooth bore firearm injury if we see the entry wound in case of smooth bore firearm injury again we can divide in the same categories so let's see the first contact shot the contact shot wound in the case of shotgun is usually a large irregular hole resulting from the explosive blast effect the edge of the defect is scorched by flame and the skin surrounding is blackened by smoke and tattooed by unburned gun powder an imprint abrasion produced by the muzzle end may be seen the shot which comprises of bunch of pellets passes into the body as a solid mass the injured tissue is usually chai red in color shotgun injury of the cranium is large and irregular and fissured fractures often radiate outwards from the margins sometimes a part of the head may be blown off then close shot up to a distance of 1 meter this produces a circular defect with irregular inverted borders the edges are scorched due to flame and blackened by smoke a fairly wide zone of tattooing may surround the edges of the wound tissues often appear chai red in color the pellets enter the track in mass sometimes the shotgun may discharge parts of the cartridge case itself such as fragmented cardboard plastic or primer particles at contact and close ranges they may contribute to the wound as well then near shot say up to a distance of 2 meters in this case the wound is circular or may be oval in shape the blackening may be evident around the wound up to a maximum distance of 30 cm 
Sometimes the VAD produces mild abrasions if fired within a range of 30 centimeters. Tattooing is present over a wide area. The pellets travel in compact mass up to a distance of about 45 centimeters, after which they begin to disperse. The entry wound is approximately 2.5 centimeters in diameter. If the shot enters at an angle less than 90 degrees, shape of the wound may become triangular or semicircular. Then distance shot that is beyond 10, 2 meters. Beyond a range of 2 meters, there will be burning, blackening, tattooing, all will be rare. The wad may be present in the wound up to a range of 5 meters. The dispersion of pellets becomes significant at range over 2 meters. Thereafter, the spread increases progressively and central defect diminishes in size proportionately. The old rule of thumb states that the diameter of the spread in inches is roughly equal to the range of firing in yards. At distance ranges beyond 6 to 10 meters, the central hole may shrink to nothing. At such range, the shots may not be fatal and the pellets, if they do penetrate the skin at all, they may lie just underneath the subcutaneous tissue. We see the medical legal aspect. These are the questions which needs to be answered in case of firearm injuries. The nature of the firearm, the range of the firearm, the direction of the firearm, the place from where the firing took place, the cause of death as well as the manner of death. We see the nature of the firearm. It is important to know the type of firearm used, whether rifle or smoothbore weapon, an examination of the size of the bullet and its weight, caliber, number, size and direction of the rifling marks on it and the kind of metal it is made of will give idea regarding the weapon used. The diameter of a bullet is measured with a micrometer, may be recovered from the body during autopsy. A bullet recovered from a dead body, dead body must not be washed or cleaned as this may remove the residue of any powder adhering to it. So instead it should be dried without using heat and preserved for future examination by a ballistic expert. No forceps or metallic instrument should be used by any means to handling the bullet or retrieving it from the body cavity as it will cause artifacts and also will obliterate the existing rifling marks. The rubber tipped forceps are best for handling projectiles. The size of the bullet, its weight, caliber, the number, size and direction of rifling marks on it, the kind of metal of which it is being made, any blunting of the nose and other relevant they should be noted down. The bullet is marked for future identification by inscribing the autopsy surgeon's initial on the base with a sharp pointed object and not on its sides or nose as this will obliterate other marks for future examination. So bullets meant for future examination must be wrapped in absorbent cotton and preserved in empty cardboard boxes. The suspect weapon and the crime bullet are both examined by a ballistic expert and to find out whether the bullet recovered had been fired from the suspect weapon or not, test firing is done. A test shot is fired from the weapon into a box which is packed with cotton wool. The test bullet which is fired is recovered and both the test bullet and the bullet recovered from the crime scene are then compared under the comparison microscope. This is the kind of microscope under which two objects can be compared simultaneously. If the rifling marks are identical on the test and crime bullets, then the suspect weapon is considered to be used for the weapon of offense. Examination of a spent cartridge case will also provide valuable clues in identifying the crime weapon. The shotgun cartridge bears the name of the manufacturing firm and sometimes the caliber is imprinted on the casing. The size of the spent case provides a clue regarding the caliber of the weapon. In revolver, the empty case usually remains within the weapon so that it is rare to find it at the scene of crime. If an empty case is seen at the scene of crime, generally in case of pistol or rifle, it is found few feet to the right of the spot where the weapon was discharged. The firing pin will make dent on the base which is peculiar to that weapon. In shotgun wound, the nature of the shots, for example, lead pellets, glass beads or stones, they may help in identifying the weapon. The factory made shotgun cartridges, they use lead shot while local made ones may use stones, glass beads, iron balls. Etc. The pellets should be wrapped in absorbent cotton and placed in a cardboard box and preserved for examination. 
The presence of VAD at the scene of crime or in the dead body conclusively indicates use of shotgun, the diameter of which may give clue regarding the caliber of the weapon. The range of firing is deduced from the appearance of the entrance wound. The direction of fire. If there is no deflection of the projectile, a line joining the entrance wound with the exit wound in a dead body will give the direction of fire. A case of devious tracks or the deflection of projectile can cause confusion and interpretation which happens in ricochet bullet. An entry wound is circular. If the projectile enters perpendicular to the body surface, and oval if the entry is oblique. In case of oblique entry, the abrasion collar becomes eccentric being wider at the side of the entry. Then the site of the firing. It depends upon the calculation of range and direction of fire. The cause of death. Usually death is due to hemorrhage or damage to any of the vital organs such as heart or brain. Then the manner of death. The manner of death can be anything homicidal or suicidal while accidental deaths are less common. To summarize this topic the, of firearm injuries, the diameter of the entry hole together with the abrasion collar may give the approximate diameter of the bullet. The barrel of a firearm is generally lubricated between uses, so it gives the appearance of the grease collar. The extent of tattooing will depend on the caliber of the weapon, the type of powder used and the range. The same may be absent if the firing has taken place through clothings. The blackening or smudging results from a superficial deposit of smoke on the skin. In other words, it is the only carbon particles deposition over the skin and hence can be easily wiped off with a wet sponge. Whereas the tattooing which occurs due to deposition of unburnt particles inside the skin and they cannot be wiped off. The edges are invariably everted and if, if the skin at the exit wound appears to be circular or nearly circular clear defect surrounded by margin surrounded by margin of abrasion resembling a wound of entrance then it is called as showed or supported exit wound a test shot must be fired from the weapon into a box which is packed with a cotton wool and this test bullet which is fired is recovered and the both the test bullet and the crime bullet which is recovered from the crime scene are then compared under comparison microscope for confirmation of the weapon used.